What's up gaming heroes and welcome back to another awesome World of Warcraft video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how I made 5 million gold. I'm going to be sharing all my tips, tricks and my TSM, everything like that so you can see all of the information for yourself. I'm not one of these BSers. I like to tell you the details and I like to show you the proof of the details as well using the TSM ledger. Thank you as always to my wonderful patrons who continue to support the channel. You are getting access to my awesome World of Warcraft guides on erosiumtv.com. I've got a team of three people who help me write guides for that website and everyone who supports me on Patreon gets access to those guides and unique videos. Now with the thanks out of the way, let's get into the video. So how on earth did you make 5 million gold erosium? I'm so glad you asked that. That's a really good question. Right, let's first of all show your TSM because if you are a gold maker, you should be proud enough to show your TSM. If you aren't showing your TSM, then I just suspect that there's some nefarious shenanigans going on. Uh, personally, that's just how I feel about the situation. Now, let's have a look here. 5.26 mil. Uh, okay, right, we're at 5,238,000 gold, and this is the one-month profile, so total profit is uh, 1.223 million, and then my total expenses is 1.4 million. Uh, that's pretty good, actually. I'm really happy with that, and then total gold earned is 2.6 mil. Really, really good gold just flowing in there. It's it's really no mess about. There's some obviously some, some peaks and valleys. Uh, but that's what happens when you're doing things like flipping. Now, that's the total gold. I want to show you the ledger so you can see the profits that I'm making and how I'm making these profits. So let's just go to sales, first of all, for the last 30 days. And let's go to per item and let's just do it the, the highest because that's really what you guys want to see. All right. So we've got a couple of BOEs that we managed to snag. I basically either bought them from people in the raid that I was with. As there was a couple of people in the raid who got BOEs. I actually got one myself, uh, which was this 93,000 gold one. For anyone that doesn't know, uh, I raid Wednesday and Sunday with the guild that I created called the Heroes of Creation on Silvermoon EU. If anyone does want to get into raiding, join Silvermoon EU, level up a character, join my guild, more the merrier, and you can join the raid team and start getting yourself through Heroic. Why buy the achievement when you can earn it? Just come to uh, raid nights on Wednesdays and Sundays, but it's EU only. I'm sorry about that. I got the BOE here for 93k. I sold that. And then this one was rolled out and I was lucky enough to win that. So I sold that for 117k as well. So that's 200k coming from raiding. It's worth noting that every night that I raid, I spend on average about 10 to 15,000 gold just on consumables for the raid night because, you know, I'm trying to progress with the guild. Then I sold a pattern uh, called the Cobra Scale Gloves. Pretty sure that I got this from mana tombs yeah, just on a farming run in mana tombs i didn't actually flip this this was just farmed and i got insanely lucky when i was doing some mana tombs run i sold that this black and defias leggings i actually bought these and i sold them back purchased these for 3750 gold and i sold these back for how much did i sell these for Thirty-five thousand gold so let's look about 32k profit there i actually bought about seven of these all at once and I'm not sure how much they are going for now, but I basically was the person to reset this market. You just got to keep an eye on certain transmogs. Not all transmogs sell really well, but some sell really, really well. Boots of the Black Flame. These are crafted transmogs, uh, tailoring in specific. And uh, I crafted these on my alts and then basically sold it on the auction house. Made about, it's saying 9,300 gold profit, but I'm suspecting it's a lot more than that. Because a lot of these materials that I farm up. I actually farm myself rather than buying. Past that, we I can see that we've got four Island Expedition Transmogs. Uh, a lot of people say Island Expedition Transmogs don't sell, but they do. It just takes time to sell. They aren't like materials. Island Expedition Transmogs take a lot of time to sell. And with these, I, I mean these Firekin Breaches, I uh, know, Bindings. I bought these for 3,800 gold on average. And I sold these for 19,000 gold. <laughs> For any of my Murloc friends out there, uh, <laughs> this is a Murloc uh, transmog piece from Island Expeditions. And I bought these for 3,880 average gold. And I sold these for 19,000 gold, meaning that I made about 18,700 gold profit. 
not oh no wait no that's not right Fifteen thousand gold profit sausage waffle uh, Firekin Breaches, another Island Expedition Transmog, bought these for an average of 3,200. Sold these for nearly 19,000 gold. 15,000 gold profit, roughly. Maybe uh, 16,000 gold. Miss Stalker's Belt, another Island Expedition Transmog. I actually bought this for a lot more. And the reason I bought this for a lot more is because I wanted to dominate the, the auction house uh, prices. Uh, <laughs> so my average sell pr uh, bought price was 9,000 gold because I over paid for some of it uh, but I did still make good profit on that so it's not too much of a problem pattern of ruined Stygian boots these are really good to flip you can buy these uh, for pretty good gold I bought this for 4,700 actually I know that's the one I bought for 4,700 but I bought two more of these for 300 gold each I remember buying these um actually at the auction house and then selling them back I sold one back 11,400 meaning I've already got my profit back and I've also got some other, look, I've got two more of these on the auction house right now for really good gold. These are really good to flip. I've been getting into a bit of recipe flipping recently. I've been loving it. Now we've got Archetype Motion of Pet. Now these pets are basically Xerath Mortis pets. Whenever you get a glimmer from Xerath Mortis, that basically means you're going to get between 10 and 50,000 gold. Because once you've got that glimmer, all you need then is to get a lattice, which is buyable from the auction house. Relatively cheap, to be honest. Well, it is on my realm. Once you've got these Genesis Motes and the Glimmer and the Lattice, you can go and craft yourself one of these pets, uh, depending on which Glimmer that you obviously got in that situation. In my instance, I've got a load of these uh, archetypes of etc, etc, and I'm making really good profit on them. They're very easy for me to farm up and they're very passive. Bloodwake Sabatons, that's another Island Expedition Transmog. Spent a thousand gold on those. Sold those for 10,800 gold, roughly. Dust Cave and Slippers. How much did I pay for those? 2,000. Sold them for 10,000. Uh, another Spell Singer Slippers. This is Craft Transmogs. And I made 7,400 profit on that. Bloodweight Girdle. Another Island Expedition Transmog. 9,500. Spent 1,000 gold. Guys, you have to spend a lot of gold on Island Expedition Transmogs to make profit. But if you just keep it posted, you will always make profit. It's really good. And I highly suggest you use my Island Expedition Transmog uh, strings. The reason I say use my strings, and this is going to sound really, really counterintuitive, and I just want you to, to calm down for a second and just listen to what I'm saying. All right, so when you're searching something like the Island Expedition Transmogs, I've got a whole group here. If you want to access my groups for this, uh, basically join up to my Patreon, and then anyone who's a Patreon can uh, basically just import my full strings here. There's uh, over, like, I think, 500 like different things that you have to add for this but yeah there's a lot of strings for your island expedition transmog groups and if you want to import mine you can do that from patreon now i've made a specific type of operation for island transmogs and there's a really specific reason for that now as you can see i've got smart average by 150 percent there's a lot of times now this is basically i'm going to explain it really quickly but here, here's the Island Expedition Transmog piece. I'll buy this, say, for 3,268 gold, and I'll post it at 150% of the price that I paid for that. Now, say there's a average, and I bought six of these. I bought six of these. Uh, I say I bought five of these for 300 gold, and then one for, like, 8,000 gold. That will average the price up between those. So it will add all those up, uh, all, all six of those uh, purchased, and then it will average out that price, and it will give me an average price. So that's why it's saying 3,268 gold. Now, this is going to make sure that I am uh, basically getting 50% profit. So uh, it's going to repost it for 3,268 plus an additional uh, 1,600 uh, gold on top. Now, a lot of the time, this basically means that I'll be posting an item on the auction house and not undercutting someone, not undercutting someone. That's a really important thing for you guys to remember. Sometimes I post things on the auction house regardless. So I actually have this post at minimum price. I don't care if there is other people posting these items at a cheaper price than me. I do not care because I know that there are people that come along to Island Expedition Transmogs and they buy the entire auction house out for a specific item because they want to dominate that, that specific item. That is what they do. I am completely fine with posting at the value I am comfortable with which is 150% smart average buy. This ensures 
ensures that I'm going to get the minimum profit every single time when I am posting these items. So that basically means I've got peace of mind whenever I am flipping transmogs to go and buy this transmog and then resell it at a minimum profit. Now, you guys think that's a stupid thing to do, Rosen. Why don't you just undercut people? Well, because I'm not cutting my nose off in spite of my face. I want to make sure that I'm always posting at the minimum price. I am willing to do it. I'm not going to waste my time and waste my gold buying an item if I'm not going to get a minimum profit margin back on that item. So I post it and oftentimes I'm not undercutting people. And guess what happens? What happens, Erosian? Please tell me I'm dying of anticipation. What happens is I actually sell that item regardless of not undercutting someone. And the, the reason for that is there's people that will join, for example, Silver Moon. They'll transfer the character. They'll buy the Island Expedition transmogs and they'll transfer back to their, their realm and they'll sell it at a much higher price than what I've typically posted it for. However, I'm still making really good gold and, you know, getting really good, um, you know, profits from these, these flips. So that's why I highly suggest to people just get into this market. It is such a good market. Loads of people say, like, cry and complain to me. Oh, my auction house is nothing like yours, Erosium. Why do you think this auction house is so different to yours, guys? Because I'm in it. I go to this auction house and I buy all the cheap ones. What do you think happens when I keep doing this over and over and over again? The prices change and their new medium becomes what I've set it to be. So people will keep posting occasionally at a low price, but you need to just get into a market and start posting it. I call it correcting the market price. So when I'm looking at, at something, I'll see, uh, let's do, do a quick scan of the auction house right now of Island Expedition Transmogs. All right, I'm going to pause the scan just there and I'm going to show you what I mean by correcting the price. So all of this right here from the blue all the way down to the yellow uh, is potentially correctable. When I say correctable, I think of the auction house as region market value average is the price that every item should be posted at. I don't care what realm you're on. I don't care what region you're on. You should be posting that item at region market value average. That's my opinion. I always do that. So I always think from the perspective of this person has posted this item at 2,000 gold when it should be posted at 17,000 gold. However, I've got rules. If there is more than five items listed on the auction house, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it because they, that is over investing for one specific item. Now I can see here there are how many items are there? Like a lot. There's like over 10 items. I'm not going to touch that because there's too much there. I prefer to make sure that I post at the value that I'm comfortable with and happy with. I pay, I've paid 600 gold for this and I've corrected up to 2000 gold, which I'm completely happy with and fine because I'm going to get a minimum average. So I've not corrected that up to the maximum price I would like to, but uh, that's not really up to me. I'm going to get my minimum profit at least from this. Geocrag Stompers. Look at how cheap this auction house is. This is ridiculous. And I've actually ran out of these, of these, uh, these transmogs right now. So I'm going to buy five right now. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to buy five. I'm going to leave these posted. I know that these are going to be bought. I, I already know they're going to be bought uh, at some point. I'm not fussed at all because I'm going to keep posting these for 150% smart average buy. I don't need to buy this entire auction house. I know someone else is going to do it. So I'm going to buy my five and then start posting them. That's all that I'm going to do. It's very simple and very easy to do. Here, again, look at this. This is a really good price for us. So I could buy two of these, which I'm actually going to buy two of these because this is actually a good price. I'm not going to buy too much because it's it's not as cheap as I want it to be, but it's still pretty cheap. Hydraxian leg leggings. I've sold these for a lot of gold in the past, so I can buy these. Have I got any of these right now? I've got six, so there's really no point me post uh, me buying more of those. Geocrag grips. I've got four of these on the auction house. There's no point touching those, et cetera, et cetera. You guys are getting the point, right? Now, Island Expedition transmogs are already done. Now, I just want to say to you, if you do want to check out my strings, you can check out my strings on Patreon. For anyone that supports me, gets access to all my TSM strings. But now we're going to look at material flipping. This is really fun. Personally, I absolutely love looking at material flipping. One of my favorite things to look at just on a whole. It is so ridiculously good how much gold you can make from flipping. Look at this. The amount of sales I've made just from in the last 30 days from materials is ridiculous. So Progenitor Essentia, this I've just got this from literally farming Xerath Mortis, just doing uh, my anima farm, 
uh, collecting any treasures that I randomly find, and then I just sell the stuff. It's easy gold. You may as well. If I want my, I actually craft this on my alchemist, and this is super easy for me to craft. It, I, I made about 5,900 gold profit on that, which is ridiculous. And uh, yeah, it does really well. Wild Vine, I bought this for 500 gold a pop, and I resold it for 5,600 and 84 gold disgustingly good uh yeah so all that is super good i sold a huge oak cash i buy this for 1400 yes yeah, so it's, it's a small flip corium ore this was a really really good one dude i loved this one look at that so i i bought that for 400 gold a pop and i sold it for 700 gold a pop boom easy what else we got fell steel bars uh i might have crafted these um but i can't remember if i crafted them or if i bought them Let's have a quick look. Yeah, so it looks like I, I probably crafted these and then I sold them. I, on a whole, though, there is so many, like, brilliant ways to make gold with things like fell iron bars and fell steel. Look at this. This one here, fell iron bar. Let's have a look at fell iron bar. So I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So many sales of fell iron bars. I bought these fell iron bars 29 gold each. Total price being 70,000 gold. I've now sold, uh, what, half? Let's have a look at that. So that's 400, uh, 800, about, about, about half. Yeah, I'd say about half, 1,100 to 1,200 I've sold of fell iron, right? I've already made my profits back already. Look at that, 51,000 gold right there. Another, so nearly 70,000 gold just there. And then we've got all of these sales as well. This is because I, I buy materials a lot of the time when they're at a really good price. And then I just resell it back. I correct the price. These primal manners. I love primal manner because I just buy moats of mana. And then when I buy loads of moats of mana, I turn it into primal manner and I resell it back. And this allows me to sell it at quite a competitive price because I buy it so cheaply. Primordial rubies. Every now and again, I buy a load of kyperite and I basically break the kyperite down into gems. And then I basically transmute those gems into the higher versions of those gems whether they're primordial rubies uh, river's heart wild jade sun radiance i just do that so i turn kyperite which is usually about three gold each and i, I get about twenty thousand of that and i just basically break it all down into gems and then i transmute it and because i've got the transmutation perk i get like additional procs and it's just like printing gold dude it's so easy and so chill there are so many different ways that i flip materials just on a whole this is just showing all of the sales. It's not showing the flips. And the reason I like to show sales is because a lot of the time I'll buy materials and then turn it into something else. And that will show as like that. That won't show as a flip for you guys. It will only show as a sale. So if I go to resale here and I look at like materials as an example, you can see this very little just hardcore flipped. It's like 387k right this month. On just flipping that isn't very good because there's loads of stuff here that isn't considered on my flips there's tons of stuff that isn't considered and it's really annoying it is really really annoying uh when i'm buying this stuff and i'm flipping it for a lower price it's not my fault uh but on a whole a lot of the time i'll buy stuff and then turn it into something else and then sell it to the auction house well that takes it off the resale and puts it as a sale instead which is why my sales are so high and my resales are so low. Again, if you want to check out my material groups, which is this type of stuff here, where you can see that I'm always checking things out, then you can check those out on my Patreon. One of my favorite things to flip are things like ores and bar, because you can make so much gold from flipping ores and bars. There is just a ridiculous amount of people who stick stuff on the auction house at a really, really low price, and you can just buy it out yourself. Just make sure that your strings are good and you've got them all set to the price that you're comfortable with. Be careful that you don't buy ores which are too low on the sell rate. I made a mistake here, and this is the mistake I made. I bought 6,772 tin ore, and I bought this at 2 gold and 94 silver each. So the mistake that I made is I bought 6,000 of an item which only sells 27 a day, which means basically I really like over-invested into an auction house. Now I'm going to have to keep posting these until they sell. It's going to take a long time. So that's a mistake I made. So I'll only buy if I can basically get a cheeky reset. So this right here is really good to buy uh, because it's 384. I'm going to buy it. I know I'm already over invested in this auction house. I'm completely fine with that, but this is too low. This price is too low and it's just a good way of correcting the auction house price. I'm comfortable with that price. I think that's a completely okay. I'm going to buy that one out as well. I know it's over investing. I don't care. 
I'm going to buy it to the price that I'm comfortable with, uh, which is staying out the blue. Steel bar. Let's have a look here. So I've got 110 of these myself, and these are being undercut. But they're the same price, so it's not too much of a problem. I bought these in 19 gold each, so I'm due for a little bit of profit there. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. Mithril bars, these look ridiculously low, so I'm obviously going to buy those and reset that price. It's a, it, it's kind of a, a, a simple thing to do. Fell iron ore here. This is looking good. This is a very good price indeed. I'm actually willing to make a bit of a big play here. I don't know how much I'm willing to buy, but I'm willing to correct this price up a, quite a bit because this is quite low. Uh, typically, I like to buy this around 17 gold each and then repost it. So I'm just going to have a look here how much that's going to cost to rebuy that and where I can reset this price. So I could potentially buy up to here for 67,000 gold. I've already got a lot of this, but you can actually make a lot of gold with fell iron ore. And I could turn this into fell iron bars quite easily and potentially double my profits there. That's very, very cheap. All it's going to take is one person coming along and buying this entire auction house out and we'll make profit. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend 69,000 gold on that as a nice and easy flip. I'm going to probably transfer those fell iron bar, uh, ore into bars to make some really good gold. Now, if the fell iron bars are too cheap, then I'll just correct that auction house as well. It, it ultimately isn't too much of a problem because uh, fell iron bars are bought so much. Remember how I told you Kyperite? Kyperite you always want to buy if it's, you know, between four and five gold. It's just an easy one to flip into like huge quantities of gems. I know each time that I buy a lot of uh, Kyperite, I'm due for a big payout from just gems alone. Saronite ore, let's have a look at that. I can sell this for 28 gold a pot. That would cost me 59,000 gold to reset. I've just transferred all my gold to my main character because I do that every now and again. Every time I hit a million gold on my flipper, I transfer the gold to my main so that I can't spend it all because uh, I know what I'm like. So we're not going to we're not we're not going to invest any more into that. I can look at leather and all that uh, later on, but I'm not going to do it right now. Just wanted to show you an example. So I've just showed you the two main ways that I make tons of gold is flipping materials and flipping transmogs. Uh, island expedition transmogs in specific past that i've also got some other things that i've started to look into such as pets mounts and recipes these are also like this is where i think i'm going in the future uh because i, I like to think of yourself as if you're going to flipping you start at the really small things such as like just basic old world materials i uh, don't look at shadowlands materials they're just completely pointless the prices are going to constantly change in Shadowlands, so just ignore it. Look at every other expansion. If you're starting with flipping, start with materials, then build into Island Expedition Transmogs. When you've got both of those under your thumb, start looking into maybe recipes, mounts, and pets. I'll say pets probably first, and then everything afterwards. So for me, personally, I've been looking into recipes. Uh, I'm going to look into a bit more into pets and mounts soon as well. I've been looking into recipes recently, and these are some groups that I'm going to be putting on my uh, my Patreon in the next day or two. Basically, I wanted to just ensure that I had all of my strings and everything sorted before I did. So let's show you an example of this. Now, this is a bit more complicated for flipping. As, as it's something new that I'm looking into, I'm still experiencing it for myself. I'm going to look at blacksmithing right now. Okay, so I've scanned a little bit. I've not done the full scan. I've just done a quick one. I'm just showing you guys an example here. So this is where you want to be looking at two things that you want to be keeping your eye on here. And that is the quantity right here and the little arrow here. So if the quantity is showing us one, they've got a, a little arrow here that you can click. That means there's a lot more than one. However, if there's only one here and there's no arrow, it means that's the only auction house posted. Now, this is posted ridiculously cheap. Bell steel at 40k each. This is awesome. This is a world drop. This is not easy to get. This is very difficult to find. So it's really worth buying. Even though it's 40k, I can correct this price to 129,000 gold. This is great. So when I sell this, I'm potentially going to make 60 to 70 to 80k gold profit on this. And there's only one on the auction house. No competition. Easy to buy. Bought. Done. Thank you very much for that. That's wonderful. Let's have a look at the next one here. This is called, are these, these are, I'm pretty sure these are actually bought from Booty Bay. And these are, are pretty, they're all right price. Uh, but realistically, you're not going to make much profit on those. Uh, let's have a look here. These are cheap and I can correct this price, but there is three of these, meaning I would have to buy three of them 
to correct the price. I'm not going to do that. I want to I want to get in on those auctions that only have one posted and no competition. They're my beauties. I'm happy to buy more than one if it's an auction house I can easily control. But if it's not, then there's no point at all. A thick obsidian breastplate. No, 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 no. It's not looking good. So we're going to stay away from that. We want to go for the, the big boy flips because these this is where you're investing more gold. But you're going to get more profit. Now, the reason you're willing to do this is because people will learn something like blacksmithing and they'll be like, right, I've learned fully blacksmithing, but I want to learn everything in blacksmithing. So they will come to the auction house and they'll buy all of these these awesome little flips that you can get out and they'll spend millions of gold on this so this is like a perfect opportunity for you to take that those millions of gold so uh <laughs> so basically very simply just buy out these and reset them reset the value and that's all you're doing it's very simple very easy to do and again you can see it's very difficult to find any more so there's a lot of here yeah where people are already flipping so you have to be really careful to look for those really good flips for yourself and just look for the basically the one and the, for the quantity and no arrow and that's kind of like your your tell to know that it's going to be a good flip or not brilliant so we've done that we showed you the the basic example of that i can now do the same with things like mounts and everything like that it's entirely up to me in how i deal with that this next way of making gold is one of the most passive ways of making gold and one of my favorites as well i do this every day i do it twice a day and that's it I keep it nice and simple and this is the mission tables in Shadowlands. All right, so I just go to the mission table and I very simply complete the gold missions, the anima missions and any resource missions that I can that will bring me super easy gold. This is such a good way of making gold. It's unreal. It's so passive and it's just easy gold. So now, right now, I've got how much have I got right now in terms of pet charms? I've got 10,000. Well, every time you get 10,000 pet charms, you can buy a pet which will make you about two to three million gold. That is unreal amounts of gold from just doing the mission table every day on multiple tunes. Now you will run out of anima. When you run out of anima by doing these mission tables, very simply uh, download the add-on called World Quest Tracker. And this will track all of the world quests that are worth lots of anima to do. And I just go and complete these three each week. Uh, that will give me 500 anima. It takes about 10 minutes to complete all three. And I just go ahead and I farm all of these and I get all of my anima super easily. Then I use the add-on called TLDR and I basically just select the missions that I'm interested in. And I simply say calculate and I wait for it start, start mission, start mission, start mission, start mission, start mission, start again. Okay, done. And that's it. That's all done. I'm not going to do any missions that cost too much anima. I only do the missions that cost 50 anima and below. And that's all I'm interested in. Then I can sell these like veiled augment runes if I want to for 60 gold each. And I get about 100 a day. It's ridiculous. I can sell anything that I make from this. So I've got all of these materials. And I've got automatic groups set up. So I can send my materials to my bank hole. Which will automatically sell these on the auction house. So if I go to mail selected groups. It will send all of the stuff that is going to be sold on the auction house to my alt. And that's it. I do that 23 times on various different alts. So I can just keep a huge amount of just raw gold coming in. Each ult makes me about 3,000 to 4,000 gold per day. And if we were to do a little bit of maths real quick, let's do it on the screen so you guys can see perfectly. All right, so that's, uh, let's just say an average of 3,500 gold each. And I do this 23 times a day, uh, right? So times 23, that's 80,000 gold a day from the just mission tables in Shadowlands. That's ridiculous amounts of gold. People think that 3,500 gold isn't a lot of gold, but 23 times, that's a lot of gold. And it takes me, what, five minutes a day to do this on each character? Less than that, I'd say more like a minute to two minutes per day on each of my characters. It's so ridiculously easy, it hurts. And then anytime that I'm just generally playing and I'm not doing things like Mythic Plus, raiding, I just level up a new character. And I, I joke around with my guildies saying that any character that's under level 60 has the debuff of might get deleted. And they only get the buff of will never be deleted when they hit level 60. So all these characters here are at risk. And so I work my, my way through one at a time each class and I just level up all of the characters. So I'm working on my warriors at the moment. I just finished all my hunters 
and then I'm going to be on my DKs and then I'm going to be on all my just random characters that I've got down here as well. And that's it. That's my way of making gold in World of Warcraft. And that is how I made 5 million gold in World of Warcraft. I really hope that you just learned some cool little tidbits here from how I'm making gold in World of Warcraft. I hope you guys appreciated that I showed you my TSM, which a lot of gold makers show you how much gold they make in their mailbox, but they don't show you their TSM. And for me, that just doesn't sit right in my in the pit of my stomach. I like to show you the details so that you know my ways of making gold are legitimate and you can access those on my Patreon. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being a part of the community here, the Gaming Hero community. Join the Discord where you can ask questions about World of Warcraft. If you're a total noob and you need help, you can ask an admin there or myself and we will help you in the best way we know how. Thanks for watching. This is Rosie Mount and I'll see you next time.